John Lehman, a software engineer at Unidata. Welcome to our first installation of MetPy Mondays. Every Monday, we're going to bring you a video or a blog post that shares a tip, trick, or application of Python to some meteorological problem. The goal of these videos is to help you get set up, so get your Python installation up and running, get the tools installed, and then to help you speed up your work by using those tools, so leveraging the tools like MetPy that we develop here at Unidata, along with the rest of the Python ecosystem, to make more reproducible science while writing less code at the same time. Today's topic is going to be Anaconda. What is it and how to install it? Anaconda is a product of a company called Continuum Analytics based in Austin, Texas, and it's an open source distribution of the Python language, as well as a package management tool. Package management used to be a large headache in Python, and Conda has largely solved this for us. It also provides a way to create environments, which you can think of as sandboxes to play in. So you have this one environment with a certain version of Python, a certain inversion of these packages installed, and that is its own sandbox that you can run, say, your research code in. But then you can create another environment with a different version of Python or different versions of packages or development versions where you can try things out and not be afraid of breaking your research code and research environment. So setting these multiple environments up will be a topic of a later video, but is a really good way to go ahead and encapsulate the different workflows that you've got. More specifically today, we're going to install Miniconda. So Miniconda is a minimal distribution of Anaconda that just installs Conda and its dependencies on your system. Anaconda would also install a bunch of modules like NumPy, SciPy, and others that really increase the disk space that the package takes. Now we're going to want to install those modules, but later we're going to add something called Conda Forge and install some more updated versions of those. So look for the later video on installing from Conda Forge. To install Miniconda, we're going to go to the download page, which is conda.io slash miniconda.html. will be linked in the video description here for you, or you can just Google for Miniconda. And you'll select the appropriate downloader for your system. Make sure you're installing the Python 3.6 or higher version because Python 2 is going to be unsupported in the relatively near future. So I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to select the 64-bit bash installer and wait for it to download. I'm going to go ahead and leave it in the downloads directory. That's a fine place for it. You can put it somewhere else if you wish, but we're going to run this script and then we can go ahead and delete it. All right, now that your download has completed, Go ahead and open up a terminal. Make sure you're in the bash shell. That's what the installer is expecting. And navigate to wherever your download lives. In my case, we just left it in the downloads folder. So I'm going to CD into that. If I look at what's in the directory, we see there's the script right there. We're going to run it by typing bash. And then you can just type a couple letters and press tab for tab completion. You don't have to type all of those characters. So bash, the script name, press enter. I'm going to go ahead and press enter again to start the installation process. It's going to show you the license agreement. You can scroll through this with your arrow keys. If you agree to the license agreement, we'll go ahead and press Q to get out of this, and then type yes that we agree. It's going to ask where you wish this to be installed. Generally, the default location is fine. Here it's going to install in users John Lehman Miniconda 3, which is perfectly fine with me. So I'll press enter. You could specify a different path there if you wished. Make sure that there are no spaces in that path name. You'll see that we install some basic packages, and then it's going to ask us if we want the path to be added to our path variable, which we do. We want our shell to be able to find this. Go ahead and press enter. Yes is the default. And now we're going to need to restart our terminal. Once you've restarted your terminal, so closed and opened the application again, if we look at that path variable, echo dollar sign path, you'll see that we have Miniconda appended to the beginning of the path, so it knows to go look for Miniconda there. You can also test your installation by typing conda list, and you'll see that these are the packages in our root environment. So we just have Python 
and a few basics. Well, that completes the installation of Miniconda on your system. Next time, we will look at how to add different channels, different places to get packages, and how to use Conda to actually install packages into your Python environment. Thanks for watching.